put this thing on because it's getting ready to be on. Hey everybody and welcome to Bell Ringer. My name is Greg Pokricki. Your guest name today is Andy Gordon. He's the author of a brand new book called New Grit, which is the story of Buffalo and a few other Rust Belt cities. It's the story of their comeback and the role that startups and the entrepreneurial ecosystem plays in that. It's a super cool episode. Andy grew up in Buffalo, moved away, and from time to time comes back. And we talk about the expat network of Buffalo and the role that that can play in helping and our general comeback. Thanks to him for joining. Thanks to you for listening. All right. Thank you very much for coming in today. Appreciate your time. Yeah. Thanks for having me, Greg. So just start out by telling us a little bit about yourself and what we're here to talk about. Sure. So uh, my name is Andy Gordon, and I am a uh, proud Buffalo native. I uh, grew up in, in Hamburg and uh, went to St. Francis High School and moved away for college about uh, 11 years ago now and have done my own little Northeast tour, uh, college in Philly and then living in Pittsburgh and Baltimore for a little bit before uh, settling in D.C. for the past few years. And when I uh, started uh, an MBA program at Georgetown last year, um, <clears throat> you know, I wanted to kind of reevaluate, you know, where my, my interests lied. And, um, you know, I, I realized as I was doing my MBA program applications and they asked you to do, you know, a one minute video describing like, you know, what, who you are and make it, you know, not generic and not like basically a, a, a summary of your application, but like actually who are you when you're at this new program and meet a hundred or 200 new people within a month or two, what do you think people are going to know about you first and foremost? And for me, after thinking about it for a little while, I was like, well, there's no doubt in my mind what that's going to be. I'm going to be the Buffalo guy to everyone there. <laughs> right. Um, you know, for, for better, for worse, with that, that comes with a lot of jabs and, and pokes at the weather and the bills. But, um, you know, it's something that uh, I was proud to have be, uh, you know, what, what I would be known for pretty quickly. So uh, after a few months of, of starting school and, and trying to figure out, you know, where I wanted to, to take, uh, you know, the next phase of, of my career, um, you know, that Buffalo piece was really important to me. So I started researching um, for a book that I wanted to write about um, cities like Buffalo and like Pittsburgh and Baltimore where I had lived, um, cities that yeah, people tended to throw jabs at, but I thought were special places um, in terms of just the spirit and the culture and the connection that are there. So the book uh, took shape and, and ended up being about you know, what are those traits that a lot of people don't recognize in places like Buffalo that make it uh, a, a uniquely ripe place to, to kind of ride uh, entrepreneurship and startups to some type of comeback? So uh, over the course of researching and writing that book uh, over the course of the past year, um, I got connected with uh, Jack Recco and Clark Dever and the Techstars folks who are working on developing Buffalo's startup ecosystem. And actually was able to come home uh, this past summer and, and live full-time in Buffalo for the first time in about a decade and work with uh, Techstars in developing Buffalo's startup ecosystem and see all the, the movement and momentum that's going on here. And in, in doing that, uh, ended up uh, finding what I thought to be uh, a, a uniquely Buffalo, um, a unique Buffalo asset for that development, and that is... Uh, the the expat community, the people like myself who have left, um, whether they have the ability or intention to come back or not, uh, I think that they represent you know a unique asset that Buffalo has to take advantage of in trying to you know complete that comeback and, and see that resurgence take shape. So I've continued to work with TechStars from back down in DC in developing that that expat community. So people all over the country, all over the world who are proud Buffalo people like myself and may not have the ability to come back uh, to Buffalo and, and contribute in person, but certainly have the, the knowledge, the expertise, the networks to contribute to the movement going on back home. So I've been trying to develop that network a bit. And that's kind of the, the Techstars mantra and what Jack always talks about is that everybody has a role to play in the startup ecosystem whether you, you know, consider yourself an investor or a founder, 
you know, there, there is some place for every person to, to make an impact in this, in this comeback really, which yeah. is, you know, a word that you use a lot in the book. Um, how do you, how do you want to engage or kind of galvanize those expats? You know, how do you see that moving forward? Yeah. So it, like you said, it's, everyone has a role to play and it's, it, it, people's first thought a lot of times is getting people to move back. I think that's you know, pretty far down my list of objectives in developing uh, this this network of people, though, because I think there is a role to play for people who just are um, you know, able to lend their expertise. You know, we have we have people who have worked at some of the biggest tech firms in Silicon Valley in New York um, internationally, uh, and people who have started successful companies elsewhere um, who may be able to you know, play the role of, of mentor or advisor, or even just to chat with Buffalo founders uh, about, you know, some struggles they might be going through, whether it's on the, you know, the sales front or the legal side, or even the team side of, of getting their business off the ground. Um, so it, it could be that it could be just having a conversation with a founder and, and helping them uh, see a barrier that that might be on the horizon that they don't yet see. Um, so that's a, a an easy way to do it. It's, taking advantage of the networks that those people have. Uh, you know, this example that I'm using of someone who has worked with some of the biggest tech firms in the country, um, you know, that person opening up their network to a Buffalo founder uh, where, you know, they might know the right vendor that this company needs that they otherwise wouldn't have the, the connection to or the ability to make a contact with. Um, and the beauty of this being a Buffalo network is that everyone is, you know, more than happy to, they, they almost see it as an obligation that they have, uh, to their city. Um, you know, because they might not be able to be here in person at Buffalo open coffee club and, and be contributing on a weekly basis. They're more than happy to, to take that call, take that meeting and set up, um, whatever, uh, help they can. So opening up their networks, there's, a bunch of different ways. Like you said, you know, they could actually play the role of investor um, or connect Buffalo companies to investors that they otherwise wouldn't have an opportunity to reach. Right. That kind of taps on uh, one of the questions I wanted to ask. Your book, the title is called New Grit. And I think that word grit especially is always attached to <clears throat> Buffalo and cities like, you know, Pittsburgh and Baltimore, places you've lived, but also, you know, Cleveland um, we always say that there's a quantitative argument to why you should move your company to Buffalo, lower costs, you know, the quality of living, there's available talent, all those things. But we often have a tough time quantifying some of the intangibles, which one of those right. things is our people, the network that you're helping to build and that obligation they feel to help Buffalo. So um, you use the word grit in the title, but how do you, you know, like... You can't quantify it, but how do you yeah. talk about or trying to put into words something that's so uniquely Buffalo that is to our benefit, and once people move here, they they find to be true. Sure, yeah, and grit is is a word that you know some people roll their eyes at at this point because it's it's you know been overused. And um, I'm happy to report though that when you actually search on Amazon for new grit, the title of my book now, I am now the actual search result. It took me a few weeks to surpass uh, Angela Duckworth's book, Grit. So I'm, <laughs> I'm happy to report that my book title actually yields my book as a result. Now. That's good. I feel like I've made it. Yeah, um, I, I Googled it this morning yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> as I was prepping. Nice, it was easy to find, I love it. Oh yeah. Um, yeah, so Grit, I, and that was really what drew me to to research and write this book. It wasn't about those quantitative things that make these cities uh, good places to, to be those, those next, uh, you know, secondary type of uh, tech centers and um, growth centers in the, in the U.S. Um, it was more that cultural and intangible type of uh, traits that these cities had um, that I had felt in person living in these cities and being from Buffalo um, that I wanted to try and express through the book. So, one of the ways that that, that can be seen is, um, and I, I call it the uh, the love of place that people have in Buffalo. Um, there's actually a Greek word called topophilia, 
which literally translates to love of place. But I was happy to find that someone had actually thought about this uh, hundreds of years ago enough to <laughs> actually put a, a term together for it. Um, but it's basically that deep connection that people in Buffalo and those other cities that you mentioned uh, have to their hometown. And it's unique. You know, I, I have a lot of friends in D.C. who are from D.C. or from New York City, and uh, they kind of look at me like I'm you know, an insane person when I don't shut up about Buffalo. And luckily enough, they have, have come to appreciate it and laugh about it, but they definitely don't feel the same way about their hometown. Right. And the beauty of that when we're talking about talking about startups and talking about founders and, and entrepreneurs, that is one of the traits that you know investors and, and people trying to determine the potential success of a company look at. It's how willing are these founders to really own the problem that they're trying to solve. Uh, and when we're talking about a place like Buffalo and you're starting a company, you're not just thinking about it in terms of your own success or failures. Um, you know, myself, and I'm sure you would feel the same way, you know, anything that I do in some way, you know, I hope reflects on Buffalo and I hope, um, you know, people uh, see any success that I would have uh, as being a byproduct of Buffalo and what Buffalo has done for me. So really that ability to, you know, feel accountable for your greater community is a, a huge driver for an entrepreneur to be successful when you feel like you uh, are accountable to uh, the whole group of people around you or the city or the region uh, you're gonna have a lot more drive to succeed so that's that's something that definitely is a uh, you know an intangible trait uh, of places like Buffalo but something that has value um, when you look at Silicon Valley, which is like the you know the, the the model up atop the hill that a lot of cities would like to to strive to be like in their own way, of course. Um, you know, there was something that that happened in Silicon Valley when it was first turning into a, a, a tech ecosystem that was growing. Um, that if, if you talk to some of those early founders of companies there, um, you know, they they indicate that they felt like they were working for Silicon Valley rather than working for whatever it was their company um, happened to be. So you've seen that type of intangible trait um, be something that has driven successful startup ecosystems like Silicon Valley in the past. So when you're looking for that type of thing uh, in those future growth centers, uh, it's something that Buffalo and, and Pittsburgh, Baltimore, Cleveland uh, those cities all have in spades. So I think it's something they already have in their, their back pocket that, that they should lead on in their development. Right. And something we say is a big part of Buffalo's comeback has been that we started believing in ourselves again, which for a long time, you know, may, many people didn't. Um, I saw an interview with you as I was researching where you made a cool analogy I liked um, that Buffalo and other cities like that have such passionate fan bases mm -hmm. uh, for our sports teams because it's something on a national level to root for and you kind of made the comparison to a startup seeing someone like um, you know like an ACB auctions being named Buffalo's first unicorn mm -hmm. there's a different pride that Buffalonians take in a success story like that as you know that people living in a bigger city might not even pay attention to or care about so I think there's you know, I liked the point that you made, but there's that fact as well that, you know, people are paying attention and want to see the startup ecosystem succeed. Right. And yeah, that, that sports analogy is one that I think helps drive it home for a lot of people because cities like Buffalo and, and the other ones that I, I wrote about, um, there's seven of them. It's, it's Buffalo, Baltimore, Cleveland, Pittsburgh. Uh, Cincinnati, St. Louis, and Detroit. And the criteria that I used to, to look at those cities specifically was, uh, you know, they were all once top 20 U.S. cities since 1900. So, <clears throat> you know, pretty recently. Uh, and they've all since lost more than a third of their peak population due to their primary industry loss, uh, most of which were you know, manufacturing. And so across those cities, you think about, Cleveland's fans, the dog pound, you think about Bill's Mafia, you think about 
uh, Steelers fans. They're all, they're some of the most <clears throat> rabid fans in the country. And the reason I think that is, is because, you know, they once were national powerhouses uh, in, in terms of everything because of their economic success. You know, they were uh, some of the major cities. And so now, uh, you know, that, that industry has fallen off and, and all these cities have gone through uh, decades of, of economic downturn, some of all of which are on the upswing now, but to, to varying degrees. Uh, the one thing that they've had throughout that that downturn is the ability to still compete on a national stage. You know, every Sunday for the football teams or um, you know hockey teams every couple of days throughout the season. Right. Um, so that's something that it, I, I think is a reason why the, the fan bases are so rabid is that they still see themselves as you know, their own uh, powerhouse city, but they recognize that the rest of the country and the world has kind of stopped looking at them in that way. So when you have the chance to compete with, uh, you know, the, the New Yorks and the Miamis and the Denvers and Seattles of the world on a weekly basis, um, yeah, that's something that the whole city gets behind. And that's something that I think, like you said, translates well to, uh, any type of startup success like uh, ACV, <clears throat> you see the whole city uh, pretty amped up about it. Whereas if there's a, a, a new, um, you know, a new unicorn in Seattle, you know, it might be, uh, oh, that's cool. But you don't get that, you don't get that article, that Buffalo News article shared by a hundred of your friends on Facebook and LinkedIn like you do in Buffalo. Right. So that's kind of the the broad sense, the 30,000 foot view. I want to zoom in a little bit on, mm -hmm. on Buffalo specifically and not just, you know, the intangibles and our people, but what do you see that makes Buffalo prime to be one of the next startup and tech havens, if yeah. you will? Um, well, to me, the, the one thing that I've started to, to focus on uh, for, you know, my, my role within Techstars uh, is... I think it's unique to Buffalo more than you know, other other places that might be future, you know, tech centers, that type of thing. Um, like, for instance, uh, when I was researching the book, other cities came up like uh, Indianapolis or Chattanooga, Tennessee. Like, those cities are, are on the rise as well um, and have uh, a lot going for them uh, in the, you know, the startup world. Chattanooga uh, is a, a place that has become kind of the, I would call it like the, the freight and shipping logistics uh, hub of the, the country outside of, uh, you know, the, the places that are, are hubs of everything, really like the New Yorks and the San Francisco's. But a place like Chattanooga hasn't had the, uh, the past success of a Buffalo and hasn't seen the uh, you know, brain drain again, kind of a, a word that some people roll their eyes at or don't want to hear anymore, but they haven't seen people, um, you know, seeking opportunities elsewhere and moving away at the rate that Buffalo has, uh, throughout the, the, the seventies, eighties, nineties. So a, a unique thing for Buffalo and, and what I'm trying to do with this expat network is to turn that brain drain into a, uh, more of a brain circulation type of thing. You can think about it, um, you know, people, the term expat is usually used for uh, nationals and, and, you know, ethnic groups and national groups who migrate to another country and create their own uh, communities within a, a city that they migrate to. I think that Buffalo has the opportunity to do that and to, you know, because the connection that people feel even once they've moved away, to take advantage of all the, uh, you know, the um, expertise that's gained, the uh, you know the, the wealth and the networks that are gained. So that's something unique to Buffalo that I think uh, you know might not be the the main driver um, of what happens back here because you know when I'm home and go to Buffalo Open Coffee Club on Tuesday mornings, seven thirty, Row House on Delaware. Be there, everybody. Uh, <laughs> That's so cool to see. You know, you get 80, 100 people there who are here on the ground in Buffalo every day making this happen. So those people are certainly the ones who are going to be the drivers of this comeback. But um, to have a whole, uh, you know, cheering section, a whole, think about all the Bills backers bars that are around the country. If you have uh, smaller um, 
subsets of that that are just like Bills backers groups, but for the startup community in Buffalo. Uh, I think that's something that not a lot of cities uh, could make happen. And I think something that can be uh, some of the, the, the supporting drivers of the, you know, the, the ultimate resurgence that, that Buffalo can see happen. Right. And you left Buffalo after high school 10 plus years ago. This summer, you mentioned you had a chance to live here full time. And then, you know, when you're back in town, like, um, you know, like you are right now, stopping by Buffalo Open Coffee Club or meeting with folks, what change have you seen in that decade plus from when you left to now when you got to come back for a few months and and now every so often when you are back? Yeah. Uh, Well, I I think it's easy to point to the the concrete things that everyone gets so excited about uh you know all the 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 breweries the food scene the uh kind of the revival of of downtown area Um, but for me the coolest thing to see and the biggest indicator that something's happening here uh, has been just the the sheer optimism within that community and the belief um, that you know it can happen here and i know we've talked about acv becoming buffalo's first unicorn company you know, a, a win like that gives the broader startup and entrepreneurial community in Buffalo the belief that it can happen here, it can happen to me, um, and it, it's not something that is uh, so far out of reach for Buffalo. Um, so that's something that uh, I have been really impressed with. I guess you could call it the, uh, you know, the winning culture. Um, you know, you get a couple wins in that community, and everyone else starts to uh, see that. You know, it, it is something that can be aspirational for me and my small company that I've just got off the ground and, you know, I'm, I'm in the thick of it and having my doubts. Um, but you know that you have uh, not only seen that it can happen uh, to your, your peers here in Buffalo, but you know that that, that community um, within the, the startup world here uh, is there to back you. And so, you know, you feel like you have a little bit more uh, of a leg to stand on because you're not just at it alone. All right. That ties nicely. I want to read a quote that you mentioned uh, from Brad Feld. Quote, if you want to have a healthy start or a healthy city long term, you need a healthy startup community. It's not all you need, but the absence of one will inhibit a long term healthy city. End quote. Um, that ties nicely into what you were just talking about, the changes you've seen. But, you know, why do you believe that to be true? Yeah. Uh, so I think you can look at what some of these cities like Buffalo were like in their heyday. Uh, and part of the reason that the, the loss of industry impacted these cities in particular to such a degree was that for so long, you know, the, the steel industry, the, you know, the, the grain elevators and, and, and everything that was up and, and driving the city's economy while they were here and while it worked, uh, these cities were able to be um, kind of at, at the top of that hill. But without having you know, a, a thriving entrepreneurial community at the same time, when that downturn happens, and it's not something that's guaranteed you know, in the, the 60s, uh, I don't think that anyone would have seen uh, what ultimately happened to Buffalo happen. No one, no one really saw that coming. And you never really know what the what the next drop off is is going to be. So in order to uh, you know hedge your city's economy against that, you kind of always have to be uh, striving for uh, other development methods uh, rather than just kind of what your your focus and, and what your current differentiator is. So that's what it means to me is that you know you can have your uh, your pillar industries and your pillar companies. Um, but if you don't have that group of people um, following whatever it is that their expertise is in and trying to grow, it's not like, you know, if, if we, if Buffalo is the next, uh, like, advanced manufacturing hub someday, it doesn't mean that everyone has to be devoting their energy to that space. To have a thriving startup ecosystem means there are founders out there um, doing whatever it is that they do best. It might be outside of the advanced manufacturing or, or whatever you know, that, that uh, potential kind of differentiator for Buffalo may be in the long term. It's, it's all about what your founders are, are best at and following those types of areas um, so that you are 
uh, almost creating like a, a portfolio approach to your economic development. So that's that's kind of what it means to me. Right. You talk a lot about comebacks throughout the book. The word is in the title of the book. Um, this is going to be our first episode of 2020, of the new year and the new decade. What do you think is next in Buffalo's comeback story? From my perspective, uh, what is next in, in Buffalo's comeback story is, uh, I think it's easy to point to uh, the Bills because everyone cares about <laughs> it. So, you know, this is, uh, we're, we're taping this uh, right before Christmas and uh, the Bills have clinched a playoff spot. So depending on when this airs, hopefully we'll be, uh, you know, advancing to the second round of the playoffs. Uh, yeah. So that would be a nice, you know, indicator, another nice thing that, that we've made it. But Hopefully we've just beaten probably the Texans. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And we're advancing. I like that matchup. It's juicy. Yeah. Um, but no, from a from a Buffalo perspective, I think to me it is. I, I think it would be really cool to see this entrepreneurial movement, this entrepreneurial community that, uh, when you're kind of at the core of it and you you're you know surrounded by those eighty or a hundred people who are are living this every day, it's easy to to see that comeback happening. I think down the road, uh, you know, to see other milestones showing that that movement has expanded a little bit um, would give me even greater hope in Buffalo's comeback. So to see people who don't consider themselves entrepreneurs or don't consider themselves um, investors considering to be a, considering themselves to be a part of that, I think would be uh, a, a pretty meaningful next step in the comeback. So people right now who think startups and think, uh, you know, a bunch of people in their 20s and 30s uh, playing ping pong during their work day and wearing too many t-shirts. Um, <laughs> I, I think to have those people see that this movement is inclusive of them and whatever it is that their expertise is, if they're, you know, accountants, if they're lawyers, if they are, um, you know, manufacturing workers themselves, to consider themselves as part of the movement, I think, is uh, one of the next steps towards that comeback. Awesome. What's the title of the book for everybody? It is New Grit, Startups in America's Comeback Cities. Awesome. Well, everybody go check it out. Before I let you go, a couple hard-hitting blizzard round questions. All right, I'm ready. If you were a flavor of ice cream, what would you be? Um, that's tough. I actually have to go i'm a i'm a hard serve type of guy okay uh and i like the uh, chocolate peanut butter cup i like a little bit of, a little bit of crunch in there so all right nice pick book or tv show that you'd recommend not your book oh that's <laughs> can't that's, that's what i was gonna go with yeah besides besides that book um right now i am I, so having lived uh in baltimore for a few years uh i there's you know, this is probably um, a, a bit of a, uh, you know, like I'm, I'm pushing this answer off because it's so easy to say. But The Wire, if you haven't watched it, is the greatest show of all time. I'm like in a constant state of rewatch for that. Mm -hmm. um, and that's something, too, that uh, kind of ties into this conversation because Baltimore is a city uh, like Buffalo who has, has gone through a lot of struggles but has the same sense of, of pride. Uh, so... It's a weird sense of pride when you're watching that show. Like it, it, it yeah. presents itself in a lot of a lot of strange ways, but um, that show is all time. Awesome. Text or phone call? Uh, I would go. I, I like I like voicemails from time to time. So <laughs> I, I'd like to talk through like when it's something important. Um, you know, I like I like the call, but uh, sometimes it's it's easier to just you know drop it in there, talk through it on my own let the person uh, kind of digest it a little bit uh, and then get back to me. But text is, is, is the easiest. But when it's something important, give someone some time to chew on it in a voicemail. It's a great answer. Yeah. Bills or Sabres? Well, right now, you got to go Bills. Um, Playoff bound. Yeah, you got to. Uh, <laughs> Sabres, are, Sabres are streaky. Uh, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know if I believe in the, the long-term plan as much as I do in the Bills uh, right now. Um, but, you know, that's, it, it all depends on who's winning. But definitely right now, go Bills. Hiking or skiing? Uh, I would go snowboarding. Okay. Yeah. Um, so I, I snowboard from time to time, probably two, 
ish times a year just enough that i can get up there and get down the mountain but never get any better really yeah uh, which is i should probably get out there more often but i love doing it so snowboard <laughs> that's like my golf game just exactly. enough that i exactly. kind of remember yep. but never improving right <laughs> and last question most important chicken wings drumstick or flat you gotta go flats Really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Are you a drumstick guy? Yeah, drumsticks. Okay. We should go out for wings sometime. Yeah, we'll split. <laughs> Thank you very much for your time. Really Thanks, appreciate man. it. Sure. Bell Ringer is a podcast by Invest Buffalo Niagara, the region's privately funded nonprofit marketing and economic development organization. Please rate this podcast, follow our social media channels, and read our blog at buffaloniagara.org for the best of Buffalo Niagara. Come grow your business with us.